Daily Words of God Every stage of God's work is for the sake of all mankind and is directed at the whole of mankind. Even though it is His work in the flesh, it is still directed at all mankind. He is the God of all mankind and is the God of all created and non-created beings. Although His work in the flesh is within a limited scope, and the object of this work is also limited, each time He becomes flesh to do His work, He chooses an object of His work that is supremely representative. He does not select a group of simple and unremarkable people on which to work, but instead picks as the object of His work a group of people capable of being the representative of His work in the flesh. This group of people is chosen because the scope of His work in the flesh is limited and is prepared especially for His incarnate flesh and is chosen especially for His work in the flesh. God's selection of the objects of His work is not baseless, but according to principle, the object of the work must be of benefit to the work of God in the flesh and must be able to represent the whole of mankind. For example, the Jews were able to represent the whole of mankind in accepting the personal redemption of Jesus, and the Chinese are able to represent the whole of mankind in accepting the personal conquest of the incarnate God. There is a basis to the Jews' representation of the whole of mankind, and there is also a basis to Chinese people's representation of the whole of mankind in accepting the personal conquest of God. Nothing reveals the significance of redemption more than the work of redemption done among the Jews, and nothing reveals the thoroughness and success of the work of conquest more than the work of conquest among Chinese people. The work and word of God incarnate appear to only be aimed at a small group of people. But in fact, His work among this small group is the work of the entire universe, and His word is directed at the whole of mankind. After His work in the flesh comes to an end, those who follow Him shall begin to spread the work He has done among them. The best thing about His work in the flesh is that He can leave accurate words and exhortations, and His accurate will for mankind to those who follow Him, so that afterward His followers can more accurately and more concretely pass on all of His work in the flesh and His will for the whole of mankind to those who accept this way. Only the work of God in the flesh among man truly accomplishes the fact of God's being and living together with man. Only this work fulfills man's desire to behold the face of God, witness the work of God, and hear the personal word of God. The incarnate God brings to an end the age when only the back of Jehovah appeared to mankind, and also concludes the age of mankind's belief in the vague God. In particular, the work of the last incarnate God brings all mankind into an age that is more realistic, more practical, and more pleasant. He not only concludes the age of law and doctrine, more importantly, He reveals to mankind a God who is real and normal, who is righteous and holy, who unlocks the work of the management plan and demonstrates the mysteries and destination of mankind, who created mankind and brings to an end the management work, and who has remained hidden for thousands of years. He brings the age of vagueness to a complete end. 
He concludes the age in which the whole of mankind wished to seek God's face but was unable to. He ends the age in which the whole of mankind served Satan and leads the whole of mankind all the way into a completely new era. All this is the outcome of the work of God in the flesh instead of God's Spirit. When God works in His flesh, those who follow Him no longer seek and grope after those vague and ambiguous things, and cease to guess at the will of the vague God. When God spreads His work in the flesh, those who follow Him shall pass on the work that He has done in the flesh to all denominations, and they shall communicate all of His words to the ears of the whole of mankind. All that is heard by those who receive His gospel shall be the facts of His work, shall be things personally seen and heard by man, and shall be facts and not hearsay. These facts are the evidence with which He spreads the work, and are also the tools that He uses in spreading the work. Without the existence of facts, His gospel would not spread across all countries and to all places. Without facts, but only with man's imaginations, He would never be able to do the work of conquering the entire universe. The Spirit is impalpable to man and invisible to man, and the work of the Spirit is incapable of leaving any further evidence or facts of God's work for man. Man shall never behold the real face of God, and shall always believe in a vague God that does not exist. Man shall never behold the face of God, nor will man ever hear words personally spoken by God. Man's imaginings are, after all, empty and cannot replace the true face of God, the inherent disposition of God, and the work of God Himself cannot be impersonated by man. The invisible God in heaven and His work can only be brought to earth by God incarnate who personally does His work among man. This is the most ideal way in which God appears to man, in which man sees God and comes to know the true face of God, and it cannot be achieved by a non-incarnate God. God, having carried out His work to this stage, His work has already achieved the optimal effect and has been a complete success. The personal work of God in the flesh has already completed 90% of the work of God's entire management. This flesh has provided a better beginning to all of His work, and a summary for all of His work, and has promulgated all of His work, and made the last thorough replenishment to all of this work. Henceforth, there will not be another incarnate God to do the fourth stage of God's work, and there will be no more wondrous work of the third incarnation of God.